ChatGPT can do all kinds of cool stuff for us. But one of the things it can do that's maybe the most surprising in some sense is that we can ask it some relatively specific questions and it can give information that's factual a lot of the time. How does ChatGPT know things? Unlike something like Google, which can sometimes return good answers for you, you know, in the little box at the top, ChatGPT doesn't search the web. It doesn't have any way of pulling out that information that other people have written. Instead, it totally relies on the information that it has in its parameters from the training process, which as we've said before, are kind of learning these associations between different words in this very complex way. Regardless, this is enough to capture a lot of knowledge and return a lot of useful answers. Uh, language models, however, are not always right. And if we start to look at what happens in the probabilities of the raw language model, we can start to see some evidence of, of where they might break down. The third president of the United States was blank. If we feed this into GPT-3, which again is the predecessor system of ChatGPT, we see that there are a bunch of probabilities over next words, and Thomas is actually the most likely of the names for the next word. So it's reassuring that it's, it's more likely to generate Thomas Jefferson than any other name, but you can see that John here has like pretty decent probability as well, 4.9% compared to Thomas at 6.7%. Now, these models will do better the more they've seen things in their data. So if we ask them, the 43rd president of the United States was blank, it will say George with probability 99.98%. And that's because we've seen the words 43rd president of the United States a lot, and it memorized this, and it gets it right. But we can trick it. We can ask it about the 48th president of the United States, and it will say Barack Obama. Now, in this case, it actually hasn't seen 48th president before. So instead, it's kind of triggering off of other associations that it has. I don't really know exactly why it says Barack here with 95% probability. Um, he's certainly a recent president. Uh, but this is what's called a hallucination, where the model produces something that's not kind of grounded in reality. And it's really hard to know when the model is going to do this and when it's going to generate the right thing. Part of how we can reason about it is we can think about what these models are trained on. One of the big sources of data is Wikipedia. So we can imagine that if a fact is in Wikipedia, these models are more likely to know it. They've also been trained on a lot of books, but we don't know exactly which ones. They've been trained on sites like Stack Overflow and Quora, where people ask questions and get answers to them. So if it's maybe a common question, maybe we've seen the answer before. Things like public social media, um, which, you know, there's certain places on sites like Reddit that have relatively more informative content and not just memes or people chatting, right? And there's a whole bunch of other random stuff that's out there. And it's very hard for us to kind of understand and audit it. And there's a lot of researchers that are trying to think about ways of doing this. So ChatGPT, when you ask it a question, there's kind of a few possible outcomes. It's sometimes very confident. It gives you the right answer. Sometimes not confident. And one of the things that this human feedback process gives ChatGPT is the ability to say, I don't know. So for 48th president, I believe it says something like, I don't know if you try it out and we've only had this many presidents in the United States. Sometimes it's confident and wrong though. And it's very hard to actually measure its performance honestly. Um, we can give it tests, uh, but if, you know, the model has the ability to remember all of this data and its parameters and it's seen the, who the third president was so, so many times. You know, if you had the ability to just read the whole internet five times, you would possibly be able to remember who the third president was as well. And so we could think back to its score on the SAT where it got a 1410, but it also saw every single SAT question on the internet. And what's hard for us to say is, did it even see the specific SAT questions that it was asked before? That would certainly make the test a lot easier, right? 
Now we can do pretty well on tests of the, you know, questions that are we write from scratch that it hasn't seen before. So it's clearly able to do something. It's not just memorizing. Uh, but it's a little bit hard to draw a sharp boundary around it. So I want you to try this out. You could try asking it about some topics you've learned in classes and look for any mistakes or, you know, can you see things that uh, you maybe can improve on. We can, you can also try to ask it about of something very specific that you know a lot about. Um, so try to ask it a kind of trivia question and see if it knows as much as you do. And you could try asking things like why questions, um, like why did this character do this action in some media or whatever and see what it says or ask it about a minor detail. See if you can really push at its boundaries and try to find mistakes or places where you could give a better answer than it. It's not, it's not so easy, but it's interesting when you can find them. That's the end of this segment.